Si Feng catches the Hongmeng furnace, preventing it from tipping over completely. He won't let Yuan Lang tip the furnace, Xuanji's memories must be preserved. Yuan Lang tells him he can die, then, and stabs him in the heart. Si Feng holds onto the furnace even while stabbed and manages to blast the sword away. Knocking Yuan Lang back, Luo Hu Jiju traps Yuan Lang with a spell. Si Feng faints. Luo Hu Jiju catches Si Feng, turning into the god of war. Look, Xuanji is here. The god of war says, Are you worried about me? Si Feng asks with a smile. I don't want you to die. The god of war responds, Si Feng smiles, even if he dies. He won't have any regrets, now that he's heard these words. He tells the god of war that he made a bet with Bai Lin. He bet that Luo Hu Jiju wasn't a murderous devil, because he has a heart now. And Si Feng knows that in the end, that heart wouldn't want to destroy the three worlds, because he's the one who warmed up that heart himself. The god of war says that she can save Si Feng. She tries, but Si Feng continues to convulse and tells her there's no point. His heart has already been broken as in, snapped through. But if he had to give up his heart in order for her to find hers, then it's worth it. Si Feng cries and tells the god of war that she must protect these three worlds for him, because they hold so many of their shared memories. As long as the three worlds exist, their memories will never disappear. Si Feng asks if Xuanji can hear what he's saying. Si Feng reminds the god of war that no matter what, she should know that he's been happy these past time life. Times, because in every that one, he met her, then. His eyes close and he goes limp, Everyone cries, even by Lin. The god of war also finds tears falling down her face. The devil's mark on her forehead fades and she cries over Si Feng. Devastated, there's a burst of white light and the god of war disappears. Replaced by an armorless Yuan Ji, who tells Si Feng that she's back, but it's too late. Yuan Lang uses this opportunity to break free of the spell Luo Hu Jiju cast on him. He flies toward the furnace. But Xuanji stops him in his tracks with one hand. He killed her mother and he killed Si Feng. She'll make sure he dies. Yuan Lang yells that he's going to be the ruler of the three worlds and no one can stop him. Ru Yu grows steely-eyed, then flies in and stabs Yuan Lang. Yuan Lang took away his everything. He won't let him destroy the three worlds. But Yuan Lang says that he's waited a thousand years for this moment. And he won't let anyone stop him. He knocks Ru Yu away. Ru Yu falls down and is swallowed by the fiery pit under the furnace. Then Yuan Lang slashes at the furnace and it starts tipping. Xuanji turns him to dust, but it's too late for the furnace. The heavenly realm shakes as the furnace starts falling. Xuanji tries to catch it with her power and asks the heavenly emperor to help. She wants the three worlds to exist forever. The heavenly emperor asks if this is her final decision. She says that this is her and Si Feng's final decision. The heavenly emperor agrees to help. They join forces and right the furnace, then return it to its resting place, after everything is stable. Xuanji turns to Si Feng and tells him to open his eyes and look. She did what he wanted. She saved the three worlds, but Si Feng is gone. She hugs him and cries. The Heavenly Emperor turns to Bai Lin, asking what he thinks of the bet he made with Si Feng. Bai Lin closes his eyes, then kneels and fully acknowledges that he's committed an unforgivable sin. He ruined the three worlds, harmed all living beings, and ruined Luo Hu Jiju. He walks over to where Zhuangji is holding Si Feng and kneels in front of her. Asking she punish him with death, Zhuangji refuses to look at Bai Lin, but also refuses to kill him. Si Feng is the one who told her that the cycle of revenge will never end. She's already found the person that's most important to her. Her heart has no room for revenge. Zhuangji frowns with a headache and Luo Hu Jiju splits out of her, taking on his own form. He kneels in front of her and tells her that in this life, she's luckier than him. She's found people she cares about and they're willing to sacrifice themselves for her. She should cherish that. Then he looks sadly at Si Feng and uses his magic on him. Nothing seems to change with Si Feng. Luo Hu Jiju reaches out a hand, as if to touch Si Feng's face, but then drops it. I wish, could live again, he says. There's no pronoun in what he says. So it's a bit ambiguous whether he's referring to hoping Si Feng will live again, or if he's referring to himself. Saying he wishes he could have another chance at life, he's perhaps talking about Si Feng. Luo Hu Jiju stands and then asks Bai Lin if he remembers the days of the past. Bai Lin remembers how they would drink at the pavilion. He will always remember those days. Luo Hu Jiju says he will always remember them too. He summons a glass of wine. Reminding Bai Lin that a thousand years ago, they had their last drink together. Luo Hu Jiju drank the glass that Bai Lin honored him with. But Bai Lin never did the same. Today, he asks Bai Lin to make up for that drink. Bai Lin agrees to drink this cup. When he picks up the cup from Luo Hu Jiju's hand, they both start radiating with a blue flame. 
by Lynn Trinks. Luo Hu Jiju says that this situation has finally ended. The other heavenly beings call out to Bai Lin in concern, but he warns them not to approach. He brought this upon himself. Luo Hu Jiju doesn't forgive him, but Bai Lin also can't forgive himself. Luo Hu Jiju says that he's just trying to get justice for himself and everyone else who has been harmed by Bai Lin. He tells Bai Lin that he only has himself to blame and that he's just getting what he deserves. Bai Lin responds that his thousands of years of cultivation led to nothing. To die like this is what he deserves. The heavenly beings cry for him, but he tells them to take him as a warning. Nothing good will come of resentment and scheming. Bai Lin addresses the heavenly emperor, recognizing that he is no longer worthy of being an immortal. Today, he will start over and restart his cultivation from the beginning. If it's his destiny in another 10,000 years, he hopes to one day join the heavenly emperor again. He looks back toward Luo Hu Jiju and smiles. Luo Hu Jiju gives Yuan Ji and Si Feng a last look. Like they're the ones he's loath to give up, then meets Bai Lin's eyes. They fade away. The Heavenly Emperor issues a decree to the Heavenly Beings. The Heavenly Realm recognizes that it was the first to wrong the Devil Realm. From now on, the worlds will not be divided by superiority and inferiority. The Heavenly Beings accept his decree and disappear to spread it across the realm. Zhuangji asks the Heavenly Emperor to help save Si Feng. The Heavenly Emperor responds that Si Feng is Xi Zhuan, who is his son, as a father. He wants to save him, but he cannot intervene in matters of life and death. However, someone has already tried to help save Si Feng. The Heavenly Emperor reveals that Luo Hu Jiju gave Si Feng his heart, the piece of his Liuli heart. The heart will prevent Si Feng from dying, but whether it beats again is another matter. Yi Huan decides to ask the Heavenly Emperor for help as well in finding out what happened to Yuer. The Heavenly Emperor tells him to go back to Qingyang, Yuer is waiting for him at home. Yi Huan disappears to return home. Wu Zichi also asks the Heavenly Emperor for help saving Zi Hu. Since Zi Hu is already dead, the Heavenly Emperor can't bring her back. He says it's pointless for Wu Zichi to look for her because she'll drink the water from Wang Chuan, the river of forgetting, and forget all about him. Wu Zichi latches onto the idea that Zi Hu is at Wang Chuan and vanishes to go find her. Tang Shi is the only one left. Zhuang Ji looks at where he kneels, sobbing, and says that she knows how much Bai Lin meant to him. She'll give him as much time as he needs, but she hopes he'll return to her one day, no matter if it takes one year or 10,000 years. Zhuang Ji turns to the still unconscious Si Feng and smiles, saying, let's go home. Zi Hu lines up with all the other deceased souls, ready to drink the water of the river of forgetting and enter her new life. She sheds a tear, remembering her life with Wu Zichi one last time, before raising the bowl of water to her lips. Wu Zichi calls out to her and she turns, dropping her bowl in surprise. He hugs her and promises to never leave her again. Yi Huan returns to Qingyang, where he spots Yuer at a food stall on the street. He's moved to tears to be reunited with her. Zhuangji cares for Si Feng, first at Xiaoyang, then at his house in the south. He continues to sleep and does not wake. But she cheerfully updates him on what's happening in everyone's lives. Zhuangji promises to wait for him, no matter how long it takes him to wake. The seasons pass. One day, when they're back at Xiaoyang, Zhuangji goes to see Feng's room to find his bed empty. She races through Xiaoyang searching for him and desperately calling his name. She doesn't find anyone, until finally, she hears her own name. She turns to see Si Feng smiling at her from a rooftop. She breaks into a smile, Si Feng flies down and they throw themselves into each other's arms. Then Zhuangji grabs Si Feng's hand. She wants to go ask her father about marriage, immediately. Zhu Lei agrees to let Zhuangji and Si Feng be married, the day of the wedding. Zhuangji who was never one for custom wanders out of her room in her wedding dress. Ling Long catches her and gently chides her to wait in her room like she's supposed to. Ming Yan shows up with a gift that some kid delivered. Zhuangji opens the box to find it full of pearls. Mermaid's Tears, it's from Ting Yu, Yi Huan, Yuer, and all the sect leaders and elders have gathered for the wedding ceremony. Dong Feng King Chi even offers his congratulations to Si Feng, as he walks through the guests to receive Zhuan Ji. Chu Lei's voice breaks as he tells Si Feng and Zhuan Ji that they must be well. Si Feng says that Zhuan Ji is his destiny, he promises to love her in this life and the next. Chu Lei walks Zhuan Ji down to Si Feng and joins their hands, formally giving her to him. After they bow to Chile and walk down the hall, hand in hand, Si Feng summons a golden chariot in the sky, then flies Zhuangji up to it. They go back to the house in the south, where Si Feng carries Zhuangji to their bed. She's suddenly shy and quiet, and he gently teases her about it after removing her wedding veil. She just can't believe she's so lucky to have met someone so important in her life. He reminds her that she said she would give him her everything, 
She better not regret it. She says, she won't. They touch foreheads. For life, Si Feng says. For all ten of our lives, Zhuangji responds. Three years later, Ling Long is very pregnant but still bustles around Xiaoyang, ordering people around as she prepares for Chule's birthday celebration. Minyan tries to get her to sit down and rest, and they bicker. Some things never change. Zhuangji tries to sneak in a drink of wine during a moment alone, but Si Feng, holding their baby, catches her and snatches the wine out of her hand, later. Chule is drunk and stumbling around, challenging everyone to drink with him, while Ling Long and Minyan try to convince him to stop drinking. Dong Fei King Chi asks Ting Nu to sneak him another hangover pill when Chile isn't looking. But Chile catches him and forces him to drink. Yi Huan and Yu show up late. Yi Huan blames Yu for their tardiness. While she talks back, Zhuang Ji drinks wine while Si Feng chases after her, still holding their child, and tries to get her to hold their kid for a bit. She dodges away, then greets Tang Shi, who has just shown up. Si Feng manages to pawn their infant off to Tang Shi for a moment. But Tang Shi nearly drops the kid while Si Feng follows worriedly. Yi Huan spots the baby and starts talking about how babies love him. Zhuan Ji watches the commotion around her with a smile, remembering what the Heavenly Emperor told her before she left the Heavenly Realm. He had told her that because she had been made and not born a thousand years ago, her every step has been her own and not predestined by fate. Whether she becomes a devil, an immortal, or a mortal, it's all her choice. The Heavenly Emperor asked what it feels like to be human now. Zhuangji smiles and says that being human is great. Zhuangji and Si Feng hug under a peach blossom tree on a mirror-like lake.